When thinking about building realistic applications on the Mono platform, you need to put some thought into the graphical user interface. If you've had much .NET development experience already, then you'll be familiar with Windows Forms or WinForms. Now, WinForms is not part of the standard on which .NET and Mono are based, that standard being the common language infrastructure, but that said, Mono does implement Windows Forms. So you could potentially build a Windows Forms application and have that run in Mono on Linux and uh, additionally on the Mac. That said, it will look like a Windows application and oftentimes applications that don't look native aren't necessarily welcomed. However, if your uh, users are accommodating, then this might be a way forward. So let's just take a look at how this might work. Um, I'll take a, an example first of all, which comes with Delphi Prism. It's a, it's a quite interesting looking application based upon XML data binding and a local XML data store. The project looks something like this. Let's bring up the main form. There's very little actual code in this project, but there is quite a lot of um, form setup and also um, representations of XML schemas um, added into the project. Now, what we're going to do is find out whether it's viable to run an application such as this on Mono. And we're going to do this by building it and then running it through the Mono Migration Analyzer. So we have a successful build. Let's pop down to a command prompt and let's run up the Mono Migration Analyzer. This will run uh, on all the Mono platforms. In this particular case, I'm running it on Windows. And we'll load up an assembly, the executable, from this project and see what MoMA has to say. So it goes through and scans the assemblies and looks at all the calls you have and maps them against various definitions of implemented stuff versus not implemented stuff in the various releases of the Mono platform. In this particular case, MoMA has come up with a problem. It says one of the methods inside of the application, or one of the methods made use of by the application, has actually still got an attribute um, applied to it, marked as mono to do, which basically means that it hasn't been finished yet. If we take a look at the detailed report for this, which loads up in a web browser, we can see that in this particular case, there's a particular overload of the dataset constructor relating to serialization and streaming, which hasn't been fully implemented. And as a consequence, there's a reasonable chance the application will fail at runtime. And in fact, if we do run it, it does fail at runtime. One of the things we need to bear in mind is that Mono, although owned by Novell, is still a community project and certain things like WinForms, which aren't actually part of the underlying CLI standard, are still, to one extent or another, works in progress. Now, the full source for Mono and all the additional libraries such as WinForms are all available and as a consequence, when problems are encountered, um, com community members will contribute patches back into the product. Anyway, this project clearly isn't going to go very far. So let's try something which doesn't use quite such exotic techniques as uh, XML uh, bindings and serialization. Let's kill off MoMA and let's look at the simple project based around the original Delphi demo, the list box. Simply adding text from a uh, text box into a list box. So it's the traditional simple user interface which again we can build and given a successful build we can test out whether this application will run. I won't run this one through MoMA, it passes successfully, so we'll just check out whether the Mono implementation of WinForms can handle this type of application. So popping straight to the command prompt again, we'll run the application under Mono. And see how we fare. Okay, that seems to work just fine on Windows. Let's prove the point by running it on Linux. Here's the Linux box and we'll do the same thing. Uh, get the right path. 
and launch it and see how we fare. Yep, that seems to be fine. And we can run the same thing on the Mac as well, and that will also work just fine. So, just to prove the point, let's do just that. The application pops up, runs quite happily. We still have the problem that the application requires launching through the mono command. We can overcome this by building a script, as we did with the console application, but there are other options for graphical applications. Let's have a look in Linux at one of these options in action. Firstly, I'm going to pop into the directory where the main assembly, the executable, resides. And I'm going to make use of a tool called MakeBundle. MakeBundle is a mono tool which, gen which generates a bundled executable. This is an operating system specific native executable that has all of the managed assemblies required by the application compiled into it, thereby meaning it doesn't need to be launched by the mono uh, command. There is actually uh, an additional option which allows the whole of the mono runtime to be compiled into your executable, but that way madness lies thanks to additional licensing restrictions, so best avoid that option I recommend. Okay, let's see make bundle in action. So make bundle is the command. Minus minus deps says work out the dependencies on the assemblies required by the application yourself. I don't want to do it. We specify an output file, so I'll have a command called listbox generated by this, and we're going to feed in as input this exe here. We launch it, it works out that it needs to generate a Linux specific executable, an elf executable. It goes through and analyzes the dependencies, it picks out all the assemblies required to be bound in, it then generates a whole bunch of assembly, low level assembly code, and assembles that into an object file, generates a C source file, and compiles the whole thing into one executable, which we can see here. Listbox. It's obviously rather bigger than the original executable because it's got a lot of assemblies compiled in, but it is now pretty much self-contained. It just requires mono to be on the box, and... Oh, silly me. And then the application operates as for. So bundled executables are one way of removing the additional parameterized mono command from the situation. Mac applications are traditionally deployed as packages or application bundles or even app bundles. If we look at some standard applications, um, these standard Mac applications here, um, all of these are app bundles or packages. If you right click on any package you get an option to show the package contents and what you'll find if you do so is that an app bundle is simply a directory structure tucked away and hidden from Finder which contains everything the application requires in order to run. So let's build an app bundle for our application. Let's just make sure we're in the right directory. Okay. Let's get rid of this copy of Finder, and we'll use a mono tool called MacPack. This takes a number of parameters. The first one is a mode parameter, which specifies what type of application we're pack packaging up. This is a WinForms application. We can also pass in an icon, uh, an, an Apple-specific icon. Um, I happen to have one tucked way back down the directory tree, and the final um, parameter is the assembly that we're trying to package up. So having done this, we now have listbox.app. Now, if we have a look at this in Finder, let's see if we can find it. Ah, there's my icon. You'll notice in Finder the .app is omitted, so it just looks like Listbox, the name of an application. The icon is already uh, being recognized, and if we choose or select the uh, app bundle, we can see the big icon, we can see it looking exactly like a regular Mac application does. Um, if we double click it, it gets launched, and if we want to examine the contents of this app bundle, we can choose Show Package Contents. This launches another Finder window, showing that we have a nested directory structure. There's a contents top level directory, there's a, a property list file um, which describes the contents of this package, there's the executable file which in this particular case is a script file in the Mac OS directory, and the resources which in this particular case are some icons and an executable. And so there we have it. We have um, an, an authentic looking Mac application uh, sat in Finder like all the other applications without any hint that Mono is running in the background. 
Now that we have an authentic Mac application, we can do things that authentic Mac applications can do. For example, um, let's just close the application here um, and let's get the dock to stay where it is. Um, I can, for example, drag my application and sit it in the dock. And then get rid of Finder, launch the application from the dock whenever I need to. Notice that when the application is running, the icon in the dock is controlled by the icon of the form on the screen. Okay, that's that. We have WinForms application development across Linux and the Mac.